Peyton Manning's favorite target. Lisa. Well, here is my 2013 NFL prediction, that Demarius Thomas is about to blow up. Anybody who watched week, week one. one. <laughs> Game one of the Game season. Game one, that Thursday he night. showed He blew out. out. After his rookie year, he was in danger of being a, a big bust. You know, he was tagged with that first rookie class that Josh McDaniels brought in with Tim Tebow. At that time, everything was about Tim Tebow. Yeah. But uh, guess what? Demarius Thomas is catching passes from Peyton Manning now. He'll catch him from anyone who it's, throws them. Certainly his career has taken off. You know, obviously great size, great speed. That guy is fast. Yeah. I mean, if he gets the ball in the open field, no one can catch him. How much attention does he want? He, he is not one to, to say, hey, look at me. We got a chance to talk to him about this hole that he carries around in his heart. He opened up to, to me about how he lives through that, how he plays through not having the person that he most wants in his life to be right there for him. I want to say thank God for giving me another day. Every morning before he starts his day, Denver Broncos wide receiver Demarius Thomas types out a reminder to himself. It's to make me stay humble. I feel like if I don't keep doing it, you know, I might forget where I come from. January 8th, 2012. The AFC wildcard playoff game against the Pittsburgh Steelers. Denver's football first snap of overtime here tied at 23. A moment he will never forget. Shotgun for Tim Tebow. Sets, throws, pass, caught. Demarius Thomas out of the 45 midfield. Here we go, 40, 35, foot race, 20, 15, 10. Touchdown, Denver is over! This was Demarius Thomas's breakout moment, the moment when he became a star. But on this night, it was hard for him to be grateful for where he was, for how far he'd come, because there was something missing, or rather, someone. Someone who was taken from him way too soon. She never saw me play anything. My mom was gone when I was in sixth grade. Demarius Thomas was born on Christmas Day, 1987, in Montrose, Georgia, a small rural town 120 miles southeast of Atlanta. Demarius's mother, Katina Smith, was 16. His father, Bobby Thomas, was 19 and had just enlisted in the Army. The two never married, but shared in Demarius's upbringing. Even from when he actually started walking, he's always a timid guy, you know, he's, 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 he's nervous in front of people, especially when it comes to talking, and never want to try to do, mess up, do something wrong. Demarius's father was often away on military assignment, so Demarius, known to his family as Bebe, developed an especially tight bond with his mother. We used to do, you know, like, play basketball against each other. You know, we used to go to like, game rooms and rock streets and everything. I remember telling my mom, I'm going to go pro at something. But when Demarius was three, his mother was arrested and convicted of drug trafficking. She went to prison for 18 months. After she was released, she worked odd shifts at a local factory. Demarius would often stay at his grandmother's house, a place that was anything but ordinary. What was going on in the house? I was selling crack cocaine. Um, I, you could, sometimes I saw some, some people coming to the house and buying it. I actually saw some of the materials they used to use the crack cocaine. Um, so I'm making it before. Grandma was like the, the head, head of everything. So what was your mom's role? My mom was just around all the time. I really don't know what she did. Demarius was worried about his mother. One day when he was 11, he decided to finally say something. I had told my mom I had a dream that uh, something bad is gonna happen. And I, you know, I've been crying every day. What was the dream about? Somebody was gonna go to jail for a long time. A month later, in the early morning hours of March 15th, 1999, Demarius, his mother, and two younger sisters are here, asleep in their home. I'm getting up out of bed and I just heard this loud noise, and just boom. Somebody kicking down the door, and um, I peek outside. You know, I see a lot of police with guns in their hands. 
And I'm just scared at the moment. I didn't know what to do. And I'm walking out to see what's going on. And see my mom on the bed, handcuffs behind their back. As the police search the home, a school bus pulls up. Demarius' mother asks police if she can get her children ready for school. They let her walk up to the bus, and me and my sister got on the bus, and she was like, uh, everything's going to be OK. I love y'all. I'll see y'all soon. Um, so y'all take care of each other. And that was it. Demarius's mother was taken into custody. She was charged with conspiracy to possess with intent to distribute cocaine and crack cocaine. Demarius's grandmother, who was considered the head of the operation, was also arrested. In order to make a case against her, Demarius's mother was offered a plea deal in exchange for her testimony. It would mean a reduced sentence. Demarius's mother refused. On February 9, 2000, Demarius's grandmother was found guilty on multiple drug charges and sentenced to life in prison. Demarius's mother was also found guilty. Had she accepted the plea deal, she would have served four years. Instead, she was sentenced to 20. What did you think as a kid when you heard that? That's a long time I seen your mom. How did things change for you after that? When I went to school, you know, kids started talking about, you know, your mom's a drug dealer. I never did nothing to anybody, but I was angry. I kept it all inside. They didn't have any stability in his life. I felt like that was one of the most important things, to give him a place that he could call home. Demarius found that home when, at age 12, he went to live with his father's sister and her husband. That's when I feel like my life changed. <laughs> Put me in the church. I had to be an usher. Started picking peas every Saturday morning. All those things I'd never done before. We treated him like he was our own son. We didn't treat him no different than we did our own children. That meant abiding by Aunt Shirley's house rules. When he first came with me, he was wearing big clothes. And so I stopped him from wearing big clothes. No baggy clothes. Baggy clothes, you might get spanked. He used to love wear braids. And I used to tell him, I said, you need to take them things out your hair. I said, I like a boy. <laughs> Forgot about the cornrows. Yeah, she ain't like the cornrows. The grill. He came home one night with the grill. And what happened to that grill that you brought into the house? <laughs> I think she threw it away. <laughs> she said she found it one time, and uh, I, had, I had a grill. You know, she told you what it said. It said, baby. <laughs> What'd you say to him? I told him, take that stuff out your mind. And he didn't. So he laid it down, and I got it. He never seen it again. That discipline and structure also served Demarius in sports. In 2003, as a high school sophomore, he tried out for and made the football team. During his senior year, Demarius had 82 receptions for more than 1,200 yards. But every time he looked into the stands, he was reminded of who was not there and why. I just miss my mom. She was like the best lady ever. I just love being around my mom. His mother was also not there when he accepted a scholarship to play football at Georgia Tech in 2006. How often did, would you talk to your mom? Oh, she was able to call once a week. I feel like she could have been around for us to, to help us grow up. Sometimes I feel like when I need her, she can't be around to help me, so I just start crying. You know, I was angry. We really never talked about it. I think I just wanted an apology. During Demarius' sophomore year at Georgia Tech, eight years after his mother's arrest, that apology finally came during a phone conversation. Basically, was just saying she was sorry for everything that how it went down, that she didn't listen to me the time I said, uh, I feel like something's gonna happen. And um, how she, you know, she missed us and she prayed for us every night. How did that make you feel to get that apology? I felt great, you know, it was, it was, it was a step, you know, I feel like that we needed to get over. For the last 13 years, Demaris's mother has been incarcerated here at the Federal Correctional Institution, a women's prison in Tallahassee, Florida. This August, E60 was granted permission to interview her over the phone. 
I consider myself not a really good mother with the choices that I made. So now I'm trying to correct all the things that I did wrong. Why didn't you take the deal? I didn't want to take the plea and, you know, say these things about my mother and have my family members looking at me and blaming me for my mother being in jail. And then at the same time, I'm leaving my kids behind. So to me, it was like a no-win situation. When you look back on it now, what would you do differently? I would make better choices. I would tell my mother no, and I would love my children harder. Would you take the deal? That one is still a no. And I hope and pray that my kids don't think that, you know, that's a sign that I don't love them. I really do love them. In the cell she shares with Demarius' grandmother, his mother has these photos of her son playing sports. What was the last time you, you saw him play in person? That was a basketball game in Vidalia, and I can't remember what the score was, but he had the game ball. I would have never thought that would be the last game that I would see him play. Never. Throw. There's Thomas. It's caught. Ten. Five. Did he get in? Give it to him. Damaris's mother has missed a great deal. As a junior at Georgia Tech, his anger behind him, Demarius, had a breakout season. 1,154 yards and eight touchdowns. Good enough for first-team All-ACC honors. He declared for the 2010 NFL Draft. With the 22nd pick in the 2010 NFL Draft, the Denver Broncos select Demarius Thomas, wide receiver, Georgia Tech. Whitfield, Thomas is off of the races. Here we go, 45 midfield. Foot race down the east sideline. Demarius Thomas, the catch of the year by Demarius Thomas. Demarius Thomas has a Denver touchdown. In 2012, Thomas's third NFL season, Peyton Manning joined the Broncos. Thomas became one of the league's premier receivers and finished the year with 1,434 receiving yards, 10 touchdowns, and made his first Pro Bowl. I think Demarius has just the incredible uh, ceiling uh, as, as far as uh, how much better he can get. I'd love to play with him for 10 years. I think he can just keep getting better and better. Thomas Scapers into the end zone and touchdown Denver. Now well into his fourth season, Thomas says he speaks to his mother before and after every game. She watches the Broncos play from the penitentiary TV room and is scheduled to be released in 2016. She was like, my first game on, <laughs> on the sideline with my pom-poms and my 88 jersey. <laughs> I'm like, you can't do that. They're going to kick you out. I want to see every detail. I want to see the part where he's set up on the line. I want to see when he take off and break off. And then I want to see how he catch it, how he have his hands positioned, how he tuck it and run with it. I want to see all of that. She's always on my mind, so I just still remember that day. I was like, I'm going to go pro. I told my mom I'll go pro in something and I'll be able to take care of her whenever. And I, every time we talk, I think about that. And I just go out and try to leave all on the field. Coming up.